All right, hello, and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel, and in today's episode, I'm going to be talking a little bit about the Fed minutes from yesterday. I'm going to be showing you some stuff about gold, some new positions, some crypto news, a little bit of speculation around the Fed and the US debt, then some technicals for Bitcoin, and we'll go over some charts. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, sit back, relax, hit that like button, and let's get into this. So this looks like a lot of tabs, but I'm going to be able to get through quite a few of these quite quickly. First of all, I wanted to point out last month, there was 10.3 million openings for jobs in the US, and we were expecting 10.1 million for December. 10 million jobs open and a 3.7% unemployment rate is insane. Even if we have layoffs, there are so many jobs open and you cannot have a recession when everyone is working and consumer confidence is high. Then the jobs came out and absolutely smoked expectations, 10.458 million jobs. So it's really not as bad as people think it is. Moving into the Fed minutes here, okay, the FOMC minutes contain almost no discussion of how officials intended to raise interest rates at their February meeting. So I slightly disagree with this statement, but I'm just going to show you because that's the best way to explain this, okay? So they said, no one predicted that rate cuts would be necessary in 2023. So no rate cuts this year. Most participants emphasize the importance of retaining flexibility and optionality when adopting a more restrictive stance. Okay, so potentially open to seeing some rate cuts. Participants observed that slowing interest rates would allow the central bank to assess inflation and employment progress. Okay, so maybe we can entertain rate cuts. Participants at the Fed's policy meeting on December the 13th and the 14th predicted that further increases in the Fed funds rate would be appropriate. <laughs> So they're going to continue to hike rates? Is that right? Then we have participants agreed that the Fed had made significant progress in the previous year towards a sufficiently restrictive monetary policy stance. So they're done hiking rates? If you're confused, if you don't know which way they want to move these rates, then mission accomplished for the Fed, right? That's exactly their intentions. They don't want anyone to know. They don't want the markets front running anything. They're trying with all their power with all their fancy wordplay to keep everyone in the dark as much as possible. Ultimately, they said that they might cut in 2023 after saying they wouldn't cut back in 2022. Then they'd hiked in 2022 after saying they wouldn't in 2021 because inflation was supposed to be transitory back in 2020. Confused? Of course you are, and that is because that is the idea. So if you were trying to get a real gauge on this, I think the best thing to do is to look at the bond market. Because we obviously can't trust what they say, since all they do is basically call heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, tails, and leave everyone wondering what on earth just happened. But the bond market doesn't lie, at least not historically. The bond market also does not believe the Fed when they say they are going to continue to hike rates. Every one of these blue lines here, blue vertical lines, denotes a time when the US two-year yield in green crossed above the Fed funds rate in orange. So the question is, what happens when the two-year yield crosses above the Fed funds rate? And the answer is simple. The moment that occurs, the Fed pauses and then cuts rates shortly after. They pause rate hikes and then cut shortly after. Pause rate hikes and then cut shortly after. Pause rate hikes, cut shortly after. Pause rate hikes, cut shortly after. Where are we today? Well, today we are in the exact same scenario as we have been in before. The current two-year yield is above that of the Fed funds rate. This means the bond market does not believe, does not believe the Fed is going to continue to hike rates and therefore we should expect a pivot to a pause in the near future. Again, this is not me saying this, this is the bond market. So it will be interesting to see what comes out of the Fed meeting in February. The bond market is suggesting that we are going to see a pivot to a pause in rate hikes followed by a cutting cycle in the not too distant future. That of course remains to be seen. Let's hop over to gold. Okay, for two reasons. First of all, gold is up another $20 as of yesterday. It's trading higher for a fourth day in a row and now a fifth day in a row. It is now trading above 1860, well above yesterday's 1850 resistance, hitting an intraday high of 1865. The US dollar has reversed most of its gain that it made on the Monday and the financial media is oblivious to the whole rally. Of course, the financial media is oblivious to the whole rally because they do not want you to be able to preserve your capital. As per yesterday's video, I said that if we could get a breakout of these boxes for the miners, I would likely be adding a position. I'll be honest, this happened quicker than I thought it might. Usually on the channel, I prefer to call positions weeks in advance and often at the very least, multiple days in advance. I only managed to call this trade out one day in advance. So it is important if you want to see these trades that you turn the notifications on so that you get a notification every time I make a change to my holdings. 
Anyway, as per yesterday's video, I am currently long GDX and the junior miners as well, as you can see here. Over in the world of Bitcoin, did you know Switzerland city of Lugano says that citizens and visitors can now live there using only Bitcoin as hundreds of merchants now accept Bitcoin. So this is a trend that I expect to continue. I'm sure this will continue. Over in Indonesia, they're going to start Bitcoin and crypto exchange this year. This is the year of massive, massive inflows into Bitcoin. I've been saying this for a long time now. Here in the UK, the National Crime Agency has launched a crypto unit. So make of that what you will. And over in Germany, a German-speaking Bitcoin community has launched a nationwide campaign with the hashtag Gesundesgeld. I didn't know what this meant, but apparently it translates into English as healthy money. So I like that a lot. I certainly like that a lot. Time for a little bit of speculation. This is the Federal Reserve Building on the 2nd of January 2023. They have put up some kind of boundary around this. Now, the question is, is this innocent? Are they just going to be, I don't know, doing some sort of refurbishment, doing some sort of maintenance work? Or if you go down in the comments, you'll see a lot of people are quite concerned about this. Are they about to pull the plug on the system? Are they forecasting and expecting riots and protests and anger directed at them? That, of course, remains to be seen. I'm not calling or predicting anything. I'm just pointing at this and saying, did you know they built a wall around the Federal Reserve? for reasons still unknown. Over in Argentina, the presidential candidate says Bitcoin represents the return of money to the private sector and we can eliminate the central bank. This is certainly a tall order to get rid of central banks. I know a lot of people think that this is absolutely impossible, but of course there's no way of stopping Bitcoin. If the world can adopt Bitcoin, then it is quite possible that we could follow it in the footsteps of the likes of Nigeria, where they have less than 0.5% adoption of their CBDC after a full year and north of 35% of the adult population adopting and using Bitcoin instead. Nigeria has shown us that it is indeed possible, despite how insane it sounds. Greg Foss, a risk manager of 35 years, spent 35 years in a risk chair, as you can see here, and he shows you some fun math for Bitcoin. Okay, the five-year CDS, this is a credit default swap, which you could think of as insurance, an insurance derivative against a company or a nation being unable to service their debt, being unable to repay their debt and therefore defaulting on that debt. So the five-year CDS on the USA is currently at 27 basis points, which means it would cost you 27K a year to insure 10 million of debt against default risk. The total federal debt for the USA is 31 trillion, which is funded, and there's an additional 170 trillion unfunded. Now, the 20-year CDS equivalent, remember this is your insurance on default, is 120 basis points. So this means for 200 trillion of debt times your 1.2% per annum, which is your 120 basis points, this gives you a $2.4 trillion premium. Stay with me. The market cap of Bitcoin is only 325 billion. So in summary, Bitcoin is trading at one seventh of the value of the implied default risk on the USA. That is because this number goes into this number roughly seven times. In other words, you're getting very, very cheap default protection on the USA and you get default protection on all other fiats for free. So if the USA defaults on its debt, if the USA becomes bankrupt, of course, you're going to lose all of your money. The dollar is going to be absolutely worthless. You can insure against this default risk using a 20 year CDS at 120 basis points, or you can insure it via Bitcoin for one seventh of the cost. And of course, as I said earlier, you will also get default insurance against every other fiat currency for free. Bitcoin is much bigger than most people realize. And sticking with this theme of just how amazing Bitcoin is, did you know in just over a year, Bitcoin will be the hardest asset in the world with certainty, with certainty. Why is that? Because we are less than 470 days away from Bitcoin's inflation rate being halved. Bitcoin will undergo the halving somewhere between March and May of 2024. When it does, its inflation rate, which is in blue here, will drop significantly below that of the current world's hardest asset, which is gold. And you can see the inflation rate of gold here in red. So we are less than 470 days away from Bitcoin being undeniably and undisputably the hardest asset on the planet. In other news, Coinbase has reached a $100 million settlement with the New York regulators. 50 million fine for letting customers open accounts with few background checks, and they've been ordered to spend 50 million to improve compliance. So Coinbase is now fully regulated. All of this stuff is no longer hanging over it and it is ready for the bull market. This guy says he doesn't really use Bollinger Bands and neither do I, but I do understand them. And the gap between the Bollinger Bands is currently around 3% right now. 
By manually checking, I could not find such compression since 2016. If you don't know what these Bollinger Bands are, they measure volatility, expansions and contractions. When these Bollinger Bands squeeze like they have done here, it always precedes a volatility expansion period. This does not predict direction, so we don't know if it will be up or down. But what we do know is the longer this volatility compression occurs, the more violent the move will be when the price decides the direction is going to go in. So whether it's up or down remains to be seen. But one, one thing we know for sure is Bitcoin is about to experience an enormous move. Four years ago, Bitcoin was at 3K. If you look at the lows from the cycle, instead of the highs, you will see that there is massive, massive, massive gains, lows to lows to lows. And I would expect to see this trend continue. Here's a nice comparison, okay? 1st of January, we're down 94% in 2012, and look what followed. In 2015, we were down 86% by the 1st of January, and look what followed. In 2018, we were down 84% the 1st of January, and look what followed. And now 2023, we are down 78% the 1st of January, and I expect this to repeat once more. Just before we get into the charts, a quick look at this from Bob Lucas. He says, this has been the cleanest stock bear market decline he's ever seen. He says, currently still points to declines into the March cycle low. So I think I've shown this on this channel before. I'm pretty sure I have actually. So possible that we're going to get some kind of counter trend bounce before rolling over. But whatever happens, this is, according to Bob, a very, very high probability trade and very, very high probability that this will be the end to the bear market decline. What I will be most interested in seeing this is whether or not this weekly cycle low forms equal or higher than this or whether it forms significantly deeper because if it forms higher up then that is undeniably more bullish. So hopping into the charts the dollar continues to make its way down to this blue trend line not much to say about that not much is going on there. The US 10 year yield apparently getting rejected here so perhaps this is the level the market is respecting maybe we could move the goalposts. Ultimately, as I keep saying, we want to see this US 10-year yield come off if we want risk to come on. Bitcoin still looks like, to me, it's thinking about dropping into this cycle low. How low down it goes is anybody's guess, but I think within the next few days, we are going to get a drop into this cycle low. At least that's what I'm hoping for. If we don't get that, as I've said over and over again, then I'll be looking to long a breakout above this blue line at around 17.6k. Over in the precious metals world, again, it's it's difficult when you, especially when you're inexperienced, it's difficult to look at open PL and wonder every time there, there's a red candle, should I jump out, should I take the profit? But with these sorts of trades, you really just have to learn to not look at the PL that you've got open and to try to push this trade for all that you can get. If we get some kind of technical damage or some kind of uh, trend line break, then we can entertain closing this position. But the the main thing here is just trying not to jump out too soon, okay? The main thing here is to try to ride this trade for as much as the market can give. The same is true of silver. We had this sort of big red candle this morning and I was thinking, oh, this, this doesn't look good. But it's recovered half of that move already. Now, I'm keeping a close eye on this. We still kind of have a trend line break, something like this. So we're holding that for now. I think if we can break down from this convincingly, retest and resume off, then I will entertain closing this trade out and look to buy another one of these sort of ball flag breakouts as we did last time so keeping a close eye on silver but for now again it's the same story if this is going to make it all the way up to the top of this range then you really don't want to duck out here because it's it, silver when it gets going it doesn't give you much opportunity to get back in so long and strong continue to push although keeping a close eye on silver gdx as per yesterday's video as per yesterday's call out and as per the twitter post that i posted officially long the senior miners and the junior gold miners so that is for me full exposure at the moment i got one percent risk on each one of these stops so that's fine i will likely cut these stops early um if we were to close back into the middle of this box because there's no real reason to allow it to come all the way down here so if we get back inside this box i will close these trades and then repeat them the next time we break out of this box but for now, we're long, we're strong, and we continue to push. We'll see what happens. Very interesting action from Riot. Riot blockchain up 15% as of yesterday. So it's right into resistance. If we can get a convincing breakout on a daily close today, I think I will add a Riot long, as I've been saying for a long time. I wanted to wait and see this Bitcoin cycle low. So hopefully we can get a dive down from Bitcoin. But if that doesn't happen, or if this is going to lead, then I say this all the time. If it's going to lead, let it lead. UK 100, the FTSE 100, it seems to be continuing to push on up. I think we've got to be really close now. How, how far off this high are we? A mere 1% away from this high back here. 
So I would say this is not a bear market rally, at least not for the UK 100. I think this is much more likely that starting with this blue line, we've had a breakout, a retest with a bear trap, followed by a swift recovery, and then this purple line, breakout, retest, and now looking to resume off. We're currently above these local highs here. So I think given that we're only 1% off of this high, it makes sense that we're going to continue to target the higher space above here. My VIX hedge is still kind of hanging around. It still doesn't seem to want to do a whole lot. So I continue to hold this trade open. The Dow Jones, again, is still not really doing much. Is this a consolidation before I move lower or is this going to round up? Nobody knows. But like I said before, I will flip short if stopped out and put the stop above here where the entry is. I'm not paying any attention to the NASDAQ at the moment and the S&P 500. Again, kind of expect this to roll over into the cycle low. How low this goes is anybody's guess, as I showed you earlier with Bob Lucas's chart. Does it form an equal low? Does it form a slightly higher low or does it undercut this low and make a brand new low? That, of course, remains to be seen. But I think whenever this cycle unfolds, there's a short term trade there. So that's the analysis. That's how things are progressing. I will continue to update. Make sure you subscribe and turn the notifications on if you want to see how I deal with these markets in real time as a pro swing trader. Put a like on the video if you, if you liked it. Dislike it if you didn't like it. Throw it down in the comments if you have anything to say. And until next time, I'm your boy Camel. All the best from me. Take care. Cheers. Bye.